Welcome to the Speaking of Women's Health podcast. I'm Dr. Holly Thacker, your host, and thanks for joining me in the Sunflower House. And today's podcast and rumble episode is going to be an introduction to one of our guest podcasters, Dr. S- uh, doctor. Of course she's a doctor, even though she's not a doctor. My niece, we were just talking about my niece, who she spent a lot of time with when she was a little girl, said to Sylvia, you have to be a doctor because my aunt is a doctor and you're so smart. In fact, when I would be in meetings with Sylvia at the Cleveland Clinic, people would refer to her and they thought she was a physician because she had to do marketing of all these medical service lines. And even though she's had no medical or biological training, um, she certainly knows a lot about health and how to be strong and be healthy and be in charge. So she is going to be perfect to be um, part of our Speaking of Women's Health team, which she was for a long time. So let me give you a little introduction about Sylvia Morrison. She's a native New Yorker, and she graduated with honors from Ohio State with a French degree, where she also studied Spanish, Italian, and Japanese. Upon graduation from college, she became the entertainment editor of the Cleveland Magazine, and then she met her husband, Paul, of 47 years. I think they got married when they were 10 Uh And Paul's also an OSU grad. So Sylvia developed a specialty in direct marketing while working in publishing. And she went on to a great career in marketing and advertising at an ad agency. And she spent um, the last 14 years of her career at Cleveland Clinic as senior director of database marketing. And that's where I met her because she was involved in marketing women's health and also children's health. So it was perfect. And that was right around the time that uh, our founder and our creative strategist, Diane Dunkelman, gifted, speaking of women's health, to our Center for Specialized Women's Health. And so with Sylvia's expertise in direct marketing and mail, um, it's so funny because her husband would always introduce her as she was a stamp licker, (laughs) which I thought was so funny. But she's very good at writing Uh, letters and she enjoys that kind of lost art but she really loved the accountability of her chosen field and she has been so wonderful at mentoring young aspiring people in marketing as well as other fields and she certainly helped a number of people in my family and in my friend circle and she's a big volunteer and now that she's been retired um, she spends part of her time in Cleveland and the other time in the Naples, Florida area, which is great for the winter time because she's an avid exerciser. She runs daily and she does regular strength training and she really lives the motto, be strong, be healthy, and be in charge. And even though I have not always named her by name on some of the prior podcasts, I am sure that you've heard me talk about my friend who maintains a journal of everything that she eats including calories and fat grams even her snacks and that's how she helps stay accountable and so slender which is certainly very hard uh after midlife to do but she's been very successful at that so welcome to the sunflower house sylvia thank you glad to be here with your honorary medical degree but certainly you've learned so much about health and wellness um, through your marketing, through your time at the Cleveland Clinic, and through your time at Speaking of Women's Health. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that experience? Yes. Well, I was very, very fortunate. And I got to the Cleveland Clinic. I had just a little bit of healthcare marketing experience. I had had Mount Sinai Hospital in Cleveland as a client. But I was exposed to wonderful people like you and other physicians, and I ended up doing a significant amount of writing. So that's why sometimes, and you know this, Dr. Thacker, I have friends who will ask me for medical advice because they hope I'm going to call you and ask you for that medical advice and transfer it back to them. Uh, But when you're exposed that way, I almost sound like I know what I'm talking about. I always tell my friends, as long as there's not a physician in the room, I will sometimes repeat back what I've heard and learned. But I had a lot of fun at Cleveland Clinic because it is really a privilege to be exposed to all that medicine and people 
like you who save lives and cure people every single day. But we had a lot of fun. The way that we did it with Speaking of Women's Health was that we had these incredible events. And we had as many as 1,200. And you and I know (laughs) we would have, we sold out every time. And we would have been able, if possible, to accommodate more at the hotel. We would have had even more women there. And they drank up that information. They were so good about listening and then making appointments as a result, which was the whole point is so that they could be in charge and also transfer a lot of that with their husbands, because we all know men don't enjoy going to the doctor as much as women do. So they were able to gather information and then pass it along and make sure that their entire families were also being diligent about their health and taking care of themselves. So, and I did, I I do want to speak to the the fact that I not only, of course, count my calories, count my fat grams, write everything down because that's how you keep yourself honest. And I weigh myself every single morning. Wow. And I keep tabs on it. It's probably more than I need to do, but when I see the little up and down, even as much as two tenths of a pound or point four, I, I groan and then uh, and then I do something about it. I realize, oh, that last little snack I had. And there are other ways to just keep myself healthy because I see friends who've had knee replacement and we know that if some of them had lost 30 or 40 pounds, they might not have needed to do that. So, so I'm very, very aware of my health. My parents lived a long time. My father was 89 in a month when he passed away. And for that generation, he was born in what nine. My mother was born in 1913 and she was She was actually buried on her 90th birthday. She died two days before. So I'm aware that I have the potential, hopefully, to have a long life, but I want it to be a healthy life. There's no point in living a long time if you're going to suffer in any way. So I want to do whatever I can to maximize my good health and and just take care of myself. And I enjoy it. I really enjoy the fact that I stay on top of nutrition. I think about it. I follow through. I'm compliant on everything except I do lay out the in the sun. The sun, the skin. <laughs> yes, that's about the only thing I can right. ding you on. Absolutely. Right. But I but I do use sunblock now since you made me very aware that I need to do that. But I but I enjoy good health and I love the feeling of exercise and running in particular. I get such a great adrenaline high from it. And I urge anybody who's telling me I have a, a a friend who unfortunately recently lost her husband and she was talking about certain things. And I said to her, you have to distract yourself. You have to do whatever gives you some small pleasure in this difficult time. And for me, when I've had any kind of issue, because we all do, uh, I find that exercise, reading, and then giving back to others, my volunteer work, which you mentioned, is extremely important to me. So two days a week on Mondays and Fridays, I am a reader at the Cleveland Site Center, and everything I do relates to news, and it gets posted on Idea Stream. So I don't see those people who are possibly taking advantage of listening, but I know that it's there for them, and that gives me gratification. And now this summer, I decided to be a recreation assistant, so <laughs> that's like my camp counselor days. So two and a half days a week, I am actually with the clients who are visually impaired, And we go all sorts of places. Believe it or not, last week we did archery and bowling. Tomorrow we're going to BA Sweetie, the candy warehouse where they'll. Yes. And it's things like that. Yesterday we had some activities related to art so we can sit and help these people. And and I'm really enjoying that. And I love dogs, especially in other people's (laughs) homes. I would rather not have one, but I love to play with them. And the guide dogs are wonderful, and they all seem to like me. That might be because I keep biscuits in my pocket, but I also enjoy them, and I respect what they do. The animals are so smart. They're well-trained, and when their harness is on, I know not to look at them or speak to them because then they they want to be with me instead of their handler, <laughs> who they're supposed to be. So, so it's fun. I get I get pleasure out of that, and that's what I urge people to do. If any of my friends 
talk to me about something that's going awry in their life. And I'll say, let's talk about what you can do. What volunteer work can you do? You mentioned my volunteer work with young people. So I get enormous pleasure. And I'll be, as soon as you and I are done, I have a young man coming over who's making a transition in his career. He's sticking with his field, but he wants to work elsewhere. And so I'll help somebody with their resume. And then I'll go to different websites with them. To, and I still, like many of my friends, are retired, but I still have contacts in the industry. And I'll help them navigate a website, let them see what they might be able to do and stretch. It's always good to look for that next opportunity because you, especially if, if somebody sometimes has lost a job or been downsized, it's not the shame that it once was years ago. It's I always talk about the fact that, well... If a door closes, a window might open, right? That that cliche. And let's look for something that you might have thought, mm, maybe it wasn't perfect in your job, but you just dreaded the thought of switching. Well, now you've been given that opportunity. So let's look at your resume and we won't falsify anything. It, we'll just talk about the things that are of interest to you and make it more robust, make your, make your life and your career, because work is such a huge portion of what we do every day. And I think it's important, my generation in particular, some of my friends didn't work. And when they decided to go back to work, they had to really start over because they worked for a few years, had a family. And for me, I always got derived so much pleasure from my career that I took off four months when each of my now adult children were born. And then I went right back. And I'm, I'll never regret that I did that, even if sometimes they do a little guilt on me. But <laughs> I know I did the right thing. I did the right thing for them and Paul, my husband, and me. That's what I knew I needed to do, and I'm, and I'm glad I did. Because of the experience you get, it's such an enriching life. So that's me. And so you made a very successful transition from a very high-powered career, raising children, being very involved in the community, and being on boards, and still staying physically fit, which is really quite a feat to juggle all of that. And that that's hard for a lot of women. Some women can just only focus on a few things at once as opposed to all of it. And then sometimes people that are going at like 100 miles per hour when they retire, I see some of my patients not plan for it. But you really planned for it mm -hmm. and made a very successful transition and you've been like retired now for what, six years? Yes, six and, six and a half years. Half. Yep. Wow. So how did you do that? Well, it's the key word you just mentioned. I planned for it. A month before I retired, I went over to the Cleveland Site Center because it was close to the Cleveland Clinic. And I went in there and spoke to somebody in the volunteer area and said, I'd like to do something. I think I could read. I read a lot anyway. Would that be something? Oh, yes, they need lots of readers because there's so much material, fortunately, today that's on audio. But there are things that people want that aren't uh, recorded every day or monthly. So they were happy to have me. And the great thing with technology today is I left for Florida a few days later, but they had set me up. We all have that voice memo app on our phones, and I wasn't even aware that I had it. I didn't need it for anything. So I'm able to record either in the studio when I'm in town at the site center, or I can record on my phone. I have a Dropbox app set up and folder, and I'm able to send the file as soon as I record. And that was one of the things I planned on doing. And then I was able, because of Zoom and Teams, whatever app people use, I'm able to coordinate with people and still help them in terms of looking for a job <clears throat> or advancing their career, giving them counsel. And I'm, I'm a straightforward person, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite direct. And a little bit of that is my mother and, and the New Yorker in me. But I think it's important to tell people what they need to hear and then always advise them. You can listen to what I'm saying, take any kernel of it that's useful to you. But let's talk about what you could do differently to find that joy in your career. Because I had so much that I received from having a great career, the wonderful friendships I've made, lifetime friendships, and also what I was able to do. I, I feel in my own little way with the different clients I had, and then, of course, my years at Cleveland Clinic, I described it as I was never going to do anything in medicine, but I was able to drive footsteps. So in my head, I feel like there were people who are able to get certain medical care because they heard about us because the clinic does a fine job of marketing itself. And then I was able to have some impact on that. 
And that's really important. And then the big events that you held and then continue to have this uh, connection with speaking of women's health, we're able to reach out to people and give them so much information today and then encourage them to use it. And that's so key because women speak to women. The men don't do it as much, but women do. And we're able to help each other out. When people ask me to, I had a, a friend who actually, she and her husband were both clinicians at the at Cleveland Clinic. She called me last night. She was having difficulty getting an appointment, a, an appointment <laughs> for somebody. And she knows that I am an expert at that. As well. Yeah. So there's a phone line that people answer 24 seven. We don't always market it as much as we could, but I told her what to do. I did a little research online because there was a particular physician I wanted to get her in with, told her how to do it. And very often I will help people and I'll just keep them on the phone line and I'll make the appointment for them. But you know, if, if you don't get the appointment you want, this would be true at any hospital, then just say, oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Let's put that one down that's four months from today. And now let's try again. <laughs> let's find something sooner. Uh, and so, yeah, my, one of my favorite stories recently is there was somebody, I was, I was in a public environment and I saw somebody I knew and I was friendly enough with him, an older gentleman. And I said to him, you're walking a little funny. Is everything okay? And he said, well, I, I need hip replacement. But I made an appointment, but I can't be seen for five months. And I said, oh, hmm. okay, well, when I get home, I'm going to call you. And we're going to do something about that. In that time period, he has now had both hips replaced. And his wife is scheduled for her hip replacement with the same physician. She could have gotten in even sooner, but he wanted to make sure the surgeon that she was all set. So, so those are the things that when you have experience and you apply it in interesting ways. It's not something anybody really taught me how to do, but it's something that I'm proud that I'm able to do. And it's all part of being strong and being healthy because it's critical. I've learned that from you. If we do things right when we're younger, you can't wake up one day and say, I think I'm going to start running when you're 70 or 75 years old. I mean, you can try, but it's probably not good. There was a wonderful piece on the news this morning about pickleball, which is all the yes. rage, but how many, yes, but how many people are fracturing? And immediately I thought of two friends of mine in Florida who literally shattered their wrists. They now have pins and plates in them and they were somewhat athletic people, but oh my God, they decided to start playing a paddle sport all of a sudden and just figured nothing would happen. Well, and they didn't trip. These are things that you, you don't have the same bone strength. And for women, oh, of course, I've learned that your bone density is critical. So staying on top of that. And one of them said to me, oh, I had a bone density five years ago. My, my numbers were good. I said, well, I'm not a physician, as we know, but I'm guessing <laughs> that actually I said, I'm surmising that your bone density isn't the same as it was five years ago since you shattered your wrist and had surgery. So uh, I did encourage her and she promised me. She said, I think I'll just up my calcium. No, go get a new bone density test and let's let the physician decide. Not you're going to double your calcium intake. So yeah, it's interesting. And with food. So I, if I may, I'd like to talk about that. So it's not only that I'm a little obsessed, as, as my friends know, with eating properly, because I do cheat, so to speak, and have some wonderful foods that I, I can't live without. But it's important to note that I don't count all my, uh, the numbers, the values on every single thing, but I do, I'm, I am very, very rigid about the calories and fat grams, but it's important to note what else you're eating, because if you're somebody like me who has a history of osteopenia, and my mother had osteoporosis, that it's important to get those foods uh, that are calcium rich to do it that way, not just pop. We'll be back after a quick break. Hey, quick question for you. Are you someone who wants to be fit, healthy, and happy? And what if I told you you could get your dream body by simply just listening to a podcast? I'm Josh. And I'm KG. And we are the hosts of the Fit, Healthy, and Happy podcast. Listen, we get it. Fitness isn't easy. Carbs, no carbs. Just stop, okay? It doesn't have to be that complicated. And that's why we made this podcast. We get straight to the facts so you can become your best you. So the way to check us out is click the link in the show notes or go search Fit, Healthy, and Happy podcast on any of the major podcast platforms. We'll see you soon. vitamins. It's too easy to pop vitamins and think you're getting everything. It's I've learned from you that, of course, that you 
absorb better when you get it with your foods. And there are so many important foods that I make sure I eat. And then seeing a nutritionist. I've learned that popping in with a nutritionist periodically, at least, I, I go at least once a year, and just fill out that little form and see what it is you're eating and have your nutritionist, typically a, a female, take a peek and say, hmm, they, they note the hours that you eat, they note the items that you're eating, and if you tell them the truth, they can adjust. There are little things that I put in my food now. I have I make sure I eat a salad or yogurt or both every single day, and I put chia seeds in and flax and it's, it's so simple you just add it and it's good for us breast health is impacted i believe right by flax i use ground flax yeah so these are some of the just little tips you learn you can read a lot but it's very important to check in with clinicians and make sure what you're doing is pertinent to you not just hearing it from your well, friends you bring up so many great and important topics and and several we've actually covered on osteoporosis bone health how much mm -hmm. calcium to get. I haven't done the omega-3 one yet, but that'll be a future podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, preventing fracture and all the different treatment options for osteoporosis. Because if adults break a bone from a standing position, even if they fall on hard concrete, that is osteoporosis for sure. And joint replacements. In fact, I had a patient who said, oh, the joint replacement and joint supplement podcast, that prepared me better for surgery than my physician's office. <laughs> so part of the reason we started this podcast and why we're so happy that you're going to um, help get that content out for people to listen to is, you know, women are busy and we have great information on speakingofwomenshealth.com, free treatment guidebooks on a lot of these topics we've talked about, social media, a free newsletter. You can go to speakingofwomenshealth.com and sign up for that health tip, recipes, breaking health news. But people uh, increasingly like to be able to listen to things when they're exercising or cleaning or traveling. Some people have long commutes. So that's why we're so excited that you're going to be able to put this content and information out and, and give these life tips on, you know, you've had a very successful life. You're having a very successful um, uh, retirement. That's, that's funny about the pickleball story. Stetson, my son, the PhD, who I'll have to have on for a, for a podcast interview with all his genetic expertise, he and his wife, Laura, they went to a work event that was all about pickleball. And he's like, oh, mom, you've got to start doing pickleball. I'm like, Okay, I work full time. I try to do regular exercise. I like to golf. Oh, and I help take care of my grandchildren. <laughs> when am I going to go? Because right. you should take lessons for pickleball. But I have had several patients with injuries. And I think we want people to be active, but stretching, getting instruction, doing it appropriately. And if you're a woman over 50 or you've had a broken bone over 40, uh, certainly seeing your physician and getting an assessment including a bone density and a health assessment is important. And people have certainly leaned on you so much when they have had medical crises. <laughs> and I think that skill that you describe about being persistent and getting the health care you need and the medical appointments, because we really have shortages in several areas, labor shortages, nurses shortages. Um, you know, my patients are complaining about how long it takes sometimes to get in. And I think that people that are persistent in plan and, you know, get on cancellation list, plan ahead, knowing that they're going to need to see their doctor a year from now. I mean, that's mm -hmm. certainly what I do. In fact, my own physician, mm -hmm. I, even though I made the appointment the same day I saw him, um, I couldn't see him for another 15 months, not even 12 months. So it, it is, wow. it is kind of getting crazy. But once you get that appointment, like you said, you can see if you can negotiate for an, an earlier appointment. That's very important. Now, are you doing some recording in different languages because you have so much expertise in languages? <laughs> well, I I do record in Spanish, and I was doing a regular one for the site center, but somebody asked if they could take that over, okay. so I I gave Good. it up since I had the other two. But I it, continue to read in Spanish and. I, I, I don't want to lose that skill. My Japanese is gone if you don't use it regularly. And I was never actually fluent. I took five quarters of it at Ohio State, but I never really ended up using it. My Spanish I ended up using in marketing because I had clients who had retail operations, like Pearl Vision, just one. And they were in Florida and Texas and California and New York, all places. 
so I was able to translate sometimes and and utilize it. So I, I've made a habit of continuing to keep up that. When I've been abroad, my French comes in handy, and it, because it's the first language um, and my first love of languages, that I I make sure that I can still translate. But uh, I don't have a any commercial purpose for it or volunteer. But it's just near to my heart, so well, we'll I get have a chance to, plan to to go out to a French restaurant. Um later in the month because one of my uh, friends oh. French mothers is flying in from Paris oh. um, and oh, so I, 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 I want to spend time with her and I'm sure she would love to be able to uh, to, to speak with you she's she works so hard at, at being so good at English and I feel badly that I can't <laughs> reciprocate at all <laughs> I mean the French I had and we love French oh food. yes French food is just fabulous fabulous and the yeah. French, even though they have mm-hmm. such rich food, I mean, by and large, they're very healthy and slender, aren't they? Yes. I've, I've always been um, amazed at that. When you're in Europe, you don't see people who are heavy in certain countries sometimes. But mm, most of the time, Europeans are slender. And uh, I don't know what their special secret is, but they do it right from birth. They so do. It must I, make a I, difference. I think their exercise and they have really delicious food mm. that they just eat. They must eat it in moderation, not not extra. And I think it's probably less yeah. processed and, and fresher. Yeah, that oh, could be. Oh, I want to comment one other thing. And in my uh, insanity over exercise, I start off every day with 100 modified <laughs> sit-ups and push-ups and 50 lunges, as long as I have some humble bragging rights today. And I do that and then do a load of stretching before I ever go out and run because you want to prevent injury as well. So whether I walk or I run, I still do that. And then I have bands that I use as well so I can do some strength training before I go to the gym and, and use the machines. And and I listen. I listen to my body when I've had an injury. I don't do what I shouldn't do. I don't try to work through or exercise through an injury Physical therapy is a very, very important part of my life. I've uh, I just had my most region, recent uh, little injury. It's a small one, and some people would have ignored it, but I could feel a little strain in my leg, and it turned out I had a hamstring strain, not a, even a pull. I've had a pull before, same leg. And so it's important to hear and listen to yourself and realize, mm, if I want to keep up a schedule of what I'm doing, you, you don't just work through the pain. You go ahead and find out what it is. And that's why we have sports medicine and so many good hospitals, because you you need to find out what that is, get a good occupational therapist, or in most cases, physical therapist, have them tell you what to do and follow through. I always am amused. People say, oh, I went to the physical therapist. Oh my God. They asked me to do this thing and that thing. And they gave me a printout and I have to do it. uh, Each item times three, five days a week. Okay, well, guess what? In four weeks, you'll be back to running if you do that. (laughs) So it's fascinating what people will do and then not follow through. But I do. I do what I'm told and because it makes a difference. And you can feel it. You you feel better and get back to it. Well, I think that that combination um, of healthy eating and physical exercise and still being um, engaged intellectually, even if it's not for paid work, mm -hmm. is really the best combination to maintain good mental and physical health. And help stave off memory loss because, you know, one in two women by age 85 have dementia. And I think that people like you that are learning new things, like you're going to podcast for Speaking of Women's Health, you're out um, helping people, mentoring them in the workforce, even though you don't need to do paid work anymore, as well as um, having attention to your health uh, and wellness is really the combination of being strong, being healthy, and being in charge. So... So thank you so much, Sylvia Morrison, for joining us in the Sunflower House. I'm your host, Dr. Holly Thacker, and you've been listening to the Speaking of Women's Health podcast. If you don't subscribe, please hit the subscribe button and give us a five-star rating. We're also on Rumble on Speaking of Women's Health, and we're going to look forward to seeing you back in the Sunflower House, and you'll be listening Um, to our guest, Sylvia Morrison, on health and wellness. Thank you.